Hey everybody! We are going to be talking about anthropology and RPGs on this episode of The Myth Wits. The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity, and coated with sarcasm. Every week we bring on an industry guest, that's no different this week, let me tell you, to talk about the ever-expanding Geekiverse and to play a game with us. We do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryant, and joining me this week is my co-host, Michael Kafis. I hit him right between the anthropost. <laughs> Anthrop. <laughs> okay. And our guest this week is Calvin Johns. Hello. Hey. Uh, Calvin is the owner and lead designer of Anthropos Games. Uh, he holds a PhD in anthropology, so he's smarter than us. From the University of Texas at Austin, where he studied alternate reality games and other large scale forms of play. Now, you know, Mike. Yeah, I know. Take I know. We should have had him on last week. I know. Was it, huh? Oh, oh, right, yeah, that's funny. No, okay, right, right, right. That, no, they, hey, it's a segue from last week to this week. No, but in in um, in uh, in our show notes, you know, I didn't have this. It, I meant to put this in there. So, I'm, Mike, I'm going to jump ahead real quick, and I'm going to start with this. What is alternate reality games? Is that um, is that a? Uh, are you talking about you like? Don't um, know. You don't know. Right, I know. Right. Um. So yeah, alternate <laughs> reality games are are large scale sort of hoaxes that have a gaming element. So they start out as sort of utter fictions that people begin inhabiting and they become like sort of hoaxes. Right. So some of the, so one of the two really great examples, um, that movie AI that came out, that Steven Spielberg film with little Haley Joel Osmond, like prior to uh, Sixth Sense. Yeah. He's like a little AI boy. Um, so hidden in the movie poster, right? All the movie posters that went around to the world, there was credits, right? Director, writer, starring, producer. One of the things was sentient machine therapist. Hmm. It gave okay. you a name. So people were like, I don't think that sentient mach machines really exist. What does this mean? Look it up on the internet. And there was a whole murder mystery about this woman and her husband and dying in a boating accident. And people like started uncovering the plot of what happened to this woman that was like tied into the fiction of the movie. So there, uh, there are these large scale sort of, I don't want to, I mean, I don't really want to say hoaxes. They're alternate realities. They are sort of, you could even think of it as people that um, there are more intentional alternate reality communities, like folks that like pretend to exist or live as like vampires or Vikings or something. So um, would you say like there are things that are like introduced as almost like an Easter egg, but it, instead of the egg being just like a normal size egg, it's like an ostrich egg? We actually, we call them rabbit holes. It's literally a rabbit hole where you can like then go into an alternate reality and you can choose to take it as far as you want. Okay. So the okay. other great one is called the beast. Um, no, sorry. That was the beast. The other one is, is I love bees and it's tied to the release of a halo video game. Um, and it was a large scale by Microsoft multi-million dollar advertising campaign where they would call up uh, pay phones and give you clues and people just communicating on the internet would sort of realize like, hey, there's this weird sort of phenomenon happening and no one really knows what's happening and you sort of pursue it knowing that it's a game, knowing that it's something playful or something sort of open-ended, um, but you follow down that rabbit hole as long as, as far as you can and there's a lot of sort of worthwhile gaming and sort of adventurous experiences that happen while you do that. And so it bleeds into real life. It's, I mean, the, the idea is it's not a game. So alternate reality games are not, they say, we are not a game. This is real. And you start getting calls from like some AI from the future telling you what to do. And you can just say, hey, maybe I should do this. And if it tells you go to the park at 6 a.m., and you go, there's like literally people there like in a fake gunfight or a real gunfight or whatever. And you geocache, you dig up some stuff and then it turns it's real and like it just keeps going on. And you sort of, it, it, your brain feels like it's real and you can take it as far as you want. Huh. Wow. So would you, would you say like a, like a really early uh, basic version of this would be like Paul is dead, you know, the Beatles, the yeah. whole like, yeah, exactly. would that be one? Exactly right. Yes, exactly right. So yeah, so you've got all the hints on like the back of what uh, Sergeant Pepper. Yeah, you've got great lyrics from. Um, it's not she's leaving home. The really good. That you know the good lyrics tucked into Sergeant Pepper and things, right? Yeah, and all of that stuff, right? And 
Billy Shears looks just like Paul and sounds just like Paul and right. Right. Yeah. And it's that, and you can decide, you can literally live in that world. And for you, you're in the late sixties, you're a 17 year old, you know, liver puddlian, and you can literally decide to believe that's real and you live your life accordingly. Does it affect your, like, does it affect your life? Do you ever meet Paul? No. Like you literally, you can, but you can just choose to live that way. And it gives you sort of affective benefits, right? Like, what do you get out of that? And for me, it ties into, I mean, I wish I should, if I would have done this in my dissertation, we would not be here today. Uh, But, you know, my, my goal later on was to tie that into all of the politics, you know, all of religion, all of, you know, these sort of worlds we live in. And this was a pre-Trump world. Um, and no one thought it could ever happen, right? And now it's like, dang it, if I would have turned that into politics. <laughs> and now we live, we actually live. <laughs> yeah, we, we live yeah, in like that I alternate could, reality I now. A, I could have been a contender. Right, I could have been, been president. I could have been somebody. <laughs> right. um, but yeah, at the time, my research was very sort of, uh, I don't want to say flippant, but I mean, it, it didn't, you know, other people, you know, other sort of grant granting agencies um, didn't really see sort of the, what I was trying to get at. Uh, and it became, for me, you know, that, that fiction, I mean, we all, yeah, we live in these different worlds and stuff. So I really looked at conspiracy theories. I looked at hoaxes. I looked at these other games and I would trigger them. I would write them. Um, my first game only had 12 players. It was an utter failure. It was at South by Southwest here in Austin. I put about four grand into it and I Ooh. got 12 players and like two paragraphs of academic research out of it. I admit it was not a, not a very effective or worthwhile sort of endeavor. Um, but then later ones at different sort of gaming conventions and stuff, I got uh, just, just over 200 players in another game. And we sort of sort of staged this world and with like a curse on like gaming dice. So it was very sort of RPG focused. And there was like a tournament and it was like half real and half fake. And there was like superstitions around that we like fed into the different people in the tournament and it made it more fun for them to play. And so they were playing a game that had, you know, curses and the sort of supernatural element. And it was sort of like how far, like Twin Peaks or something, right? How far they right. want to believe or not. And they could choose and it gave them affective payoff, right? To believe that, like when you root for a team, if you watch a baseball game or a football game and you don't care who wins, okay, you don't care. If you right. decide to start caring a lot, you then get affective payoff, right? Like you get, you get a, you get a return on that investment. Right. So I was kind of trying to study, you know, like where people opt in and how we all opt in sort of a thing. So, so kind of like you, you're getting, you're getting the, the, the endorphins and the, the the neurotransmitters pumping by participating in this thing. And you're, Mm -hmm. you're getting affected as if it was really happening to you or if this was a real thing, you're actually getting those rewards and punishments and, you know, staying up late at night. I mean, Mike, when you were playing, when you're playing, what was that game you had on your phone where you would go to certain spots and you would um, suck up, I don't know, points or what? Ingress. 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 (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. No, dude, that's totally what we're talking about, right? Because oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's tied into real locations. You would have to go to, to real locations to get these these places that you would capture. And there were teams and there was a and, and two different factions. And yeah. so that's and, the whole and thing. And there was a real world aspect to it where there were meetups. And yeah. the, the uh, amount of people that showed up to an event could have, uh, could have an effect within the game right. and things like that. Yep, yep. Well, and it's right. the same with sports, right? I mean, people say like that's... Mm-hmm real but like literally i mean most geeks have sort of joked about how football is like you know fantasy but you know it's it's a game right but the idea i mean people put on costumes and go to events and they really 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 care who wins and it does not affect them at all right but people get invested in it it's the same with i mean any game right you choose to invest in those things um and they will not take their underwear off until their team uh loses Right, yeah, like yeah. hockey and baseball, so superstitious, right? <laughs> Football, not so much. Basketball, right. not so much. But baseball, yeah. hockey, wow. Yeah. Right. Yeah. All right, so also, uh, Pete, oh, and, and just so everyone knows, I had interviewed um, Calvin uh, previously a couple months ago for uh, the uh, uh, AetherCon uh, mm-hmm. online convention. So, uh, Which is I coming up in the, bit, yeah. what, the second yeah. weekend in November. Yeah, it's coming yes. up soon in November. Yep, so yep. Uh, I know a little bit, and so um, Calvin, tell Pete like how old you were when you wrote your first uh, RPG. 
Oh, Pete, this is a, it's a long tale. He's setting you up. Um, no, I wrote them. I wrote games as a young kid. Um, I think I may have said this before. When my cousin was going away for a while, which he may have been going to lock up. I don't know. I was a young boy. Um, he gave us. He gave myself and my brothers boxes of goods, and one right. of those boxes. Uh, was filled with adult content and one of those boxes was filled with role-playing games and I I mean I am a nerd I mean I'm still wearing my work clothes I'm a nerd like to the core and so I picked the gaming box and uh, it had uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles oh I have that uh, and other strangeness other strangeness yeah it. yep and it had uh, some shadow run I think maybe and a couple other games and some like D&D second edition so I started we started playing and we needed a turn um, the Palladium games, like Heroes, Heroes Unlimited and, yep. and Turtles into fantasy. So I started writing games when I was like 12, 13. Um, and I have, uh, my mother has a trunk in her basement of all these mead notebooks that are, you know, the rule was, we all do, right? We've all been, yeah, we've been writing games forever. Yeah. Um, and I think what, um, what we might be referring to here is uh, yeah, I went to a, a Christian church camp and I gave a kid my old Mead notebook as I copied my, I, I transcribed the new edition of the game, you know, like all the margin notes and all the rules we changed when I was, I think 14, we transcribed right. into a new Mead notebook, three subject Mead notebook, right? Right. I die cut the cover with a razor blade I stole from the kitchen and we like, you know, we like cut like this great, like iconic silhouette of a barbarian or whatever. And so I gave the old Mead notebook to, to a, a, a guy that, you know, a kid that played with us at church camp. Um, and then I found out six, shoot, no, 10, 11, yeah. nine or 10 years later, he found me on Facebook and sent a message like, you should publish this game. Have you published it yet? I'm on level 162. And like, what? me and my friends <laughs> have been playing this game for 10 years. <laughs> and I was just like, <laughs> wow wow um, and it's awesome and to me it speaks to a time that doesn't exist anymore and i'm not a sentimental man but i think i am a nostalgic man in the sense that i really do i'm really glad that i was born in 1981 but i don't consider myself a millennial not that there's anything wrong with being a millennial but i mean i really remember like those days you know before you know, i mean i remember watching you know like, like turning the knob on the tv and trying to find as a kid like a six-year-old you know trying to find the um the mysterious cities of gold mm -hmm. on like, the show right or like as an eight-year-old trying to watch ducktales and trying to like yeah. turn the gears you know i was like it was literally religious <laughs> right i yeah. was like praying and like pounding things and superstitiously trying to make ducktales show up on the screen as like a seven or eight-year-old you know and, that's funny that's and so funny. to yeah. me that idea you know these guys we met at a church camp and shoot man i fell in love with the girl i think she was like 18 and i was like 11 and I yeah. had, you know, 13, I had a crush on her and I, you know, wrote her letters and she wrote me back just to be nice for a few years. And, um, and, you know, it was the sort of time where like you could live in these worlds and like everyone was just sort of like building stuff in their heads and like, you know, trying to learn. And, um, and this kid, you know, he really liked our game and he just kept playing it with his friends. And I mean, <laughs> that's hilarious. It, yeah. 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 And, I mean, I joke about, and I feel bad cause I, and there were times in my life when I would even, I would denigrate that in a way. Right. And I was kind of like, Oh my gosh, like what a weirdo. But like, I've done the same thing. I mean, shoot, like, like, I mean, I mentioned that, you know, that counselor that I fell in love with just to say, I mean, I've done this, you know, we've all sort of just been caught up in things and it's really cool to realize, you know, when people, you know, how you affect people and how people affect you. And so for me, gaming, even with my younger brother and I growing up and, you know, it's like doing the whole like shadow boxing, like ninja fighting and in our rooms and stuff. And I was always like, Hey man, like, I'll just be all the bad guys and you can just win all the time. Like, I don't mind. Like, you know? <laughs> okay, right. And so as I'm playing that part. Yeah. And everyone talks about like the powers of like a dungeon master, right? If we get back to the, the tabletop gaming thing, right. You know, the powers of a DM, but really a DM is a professional loser. <laughs> like yeah. you just oh, lose. <laughs> if you win, the game's over. Like you just lose all the time. And unless so you're, uh, unless you're, you're like one of the old school guys who just does the, you know, the TPK loves the TPK yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, they're like the jerks well, that all. I can, I can win. I'll win all the time. <laughs> yeah, and we, I mean, there's, I mean, obviously, like Call of Cthulhu, right? Like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's the big game. We can go. We have the North Texas RPG kind of NTRPG up in right? Denton, Texas, and you can play Call of Cthulhu with Peterson, and if you survive 
they'll sign your your character sheet and let you keep it. But most oh, of the wow. people don't survive. It's like right. a TPK most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. All right. Well, you know, I'll tell you, uh, it's funny that Mike brought that up because that, that's me. I, I, was, I started playing uh, in 1980 when I was 10. And I think by the time I was 10 and a half, I was already making my own game. Yeah, uh, yeah. And it was terrible. It was horrible. And uh, I still have it, though. I still have it. And, and it was in one of those comp- – comp- uh, what is it? Those uh, – what are those books that are black and white? The uh, com- is it composite notebooks? What is it? The, yeah, uh, yeah. Composition. the composition. Composition. The music composition. composition. Yeah, yeah. I have, it's notebooks, so I have an yeah. old old composition notebook, and it's terrible. The games. There's no game. There's actually no game. It's just stuff I wrote down and we played and just made <laughs> shit up as we went along. There was no no real rules or any That's way to nice. really resolve anything. But it was it was what it was. I you know, I, I, I wish I could remember this guy's name, and I will put it in your whenever this gets published, right? Like we'll put yeah. it in the note somewhere. Um, when last time I was at the, um, I don't I don't go to that NTRPG convention anymore for political reasons we won't get into. Right. Um, but uh, there was a PhD researcher there from, not Texas A and M, maybe University of Texas, Dallas. I mean, or something. He was a PhD researcher about the ephemera, the ephemerata of role playing games, and he was collecting all of these notes and like all of, like the scratch pads and all that stuff. Hmm. And uh, and I I meant to get him some things, but all of my stuff was up in Michigan, so I never really got him a good a good collection of things. But that idea, like I mean, like what you were saying, Pete, like it wasn't really even a game. Like if you if you look at some of those scratch pads, it's like doodles and maps. And right, I I'm not joking. I don't think this is projection. I can go back and read those, and I can see that page where I drew like that elf guy. And I have the Heroes Unlimited stats. I've got, like, strike, parry, dodge, roll with punch, fall. Like, all right. the stats, like, written out for a Palladium role-playing game. And I can, like, remember, you know, like, 1994 and, like, hanging out on, like, my old, you know, the ranch-style house in Michigan where all, you know, our toilet wasn't even white, right? It was, like, a green right. ceramic toilet. It was, like, oh. a mustard-colored, mustard-colored I remember colored those. Thing. Yeah. And like you know, it was all like, it was like that '70s show sort of coloration in my 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 old kitchen, even in the '90s. And I remember playing these games like, oh my gosh, that was when so and so got his leg chopped off when he teleported into a wall. And like you remember all these things, right. um, even from those little those little notes, right? Those just that that scribbles on that page will take you back so fast. Yeah, it's amazing. It, it is amazing. Like I'll open it up and and all of a sudden I'm in my friend's basement. And it's it's yeah. you know it's 1983, yeah. and like yeah. the like the, the show Stranger Things, right? It takes right. place in 1983, mm-hmm. and those kids, the actors, are actually almost all of them are 13 in that first season. That's right? your age. That's my age. I was nice. 13 in a guy's basement playing nice. role playing games, and yeah. when that show opens up, I'm like, that's me. I'm I'm sitting that's at that table. That's you know. Sweet. And what's that for ET, right? It wasn't ET. That yeah, was same thing. One maybe, but ET. 81. Those young kids, right? Pretty much the they same thing. They were playing D in that first. So you would have been the younger. You would have been then Elliot in Elliot. ET, yep. right? You would have been like eleven. Yep. When we when yeah. we came home, we're all yelling at each other. Zero charisma. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, yeah. all right. Okay, yeah. enough nostalgia. So, right, um, oh, hey, I'm, Mike, I'm, we're gonna, gonna go. I'm th- gonna Reel you in, guys, in okay, for a thank second. You. Okay, thank you. I'm going to change the subject because we're going to get back to talking about role-playing, but I really want to uh, talk beer for a second because uh, you sure. are a big beer uh, aficionado. Are you not, Calvin? I, 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 I do know and enjoy my beers. That is true. Yeah. I like – so so. I'm a big beer person too. As well. I love going – I, I go – I travel for work a lot of times and I'll go all over the country and I'll try be, the local – I love having the local like microbrews and stuff, you know, stuff mm-hmm. you can't get here. Uh, yeah. But you, you know what I'm really digging on? Like I, I love IPAs and I know it's kind of typical. Call me – I'm a basic bitch, but uh, <laughs> I love IPAs. Mm. But I really love sours. I'm really getting into sours and not the oh, stuff that is okay. – not the stuff that's over sour. Not the not the the kind of, you know, like the, the – Yeah, the sensational – yeah. yeah, I like like traditional sours. I can't remember they. There's actually a name for them, um, some kind of German name, I believe. But but um, but there's like one of my favorites is this one from Diamondback Brewing Company called Sour Dave. So have have you been drinking any sours? You in, into sours at all? I, we actually actually Austin has a great scene for that. Um, we've got 
uh, the Jester King Brewery, which does all wild yeasts, which don't, they don't, they're not technically sours, uh, but people drinking them from around would maybe assume or, you know, they, they feel in the ballpark. Mm -hmm. Um, and then we've got, what's the other one? Something we've got an owl, like a blue owl or something. We have a whole other brewery too. That's just, just sours. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm fine with the sour. If it's, if it's tart and mm-hmm. only tart, I'm great with it. Yeah. Um, you can have, but any beer for me that you can only drink one of, I'm going to say, yeah, you're great. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, if I can only have one of you, yeah, I'm good. In my sense, like it, with, for movies, it's the opposite. Like I can only watch Vanilla Sky once every four years. Right. I can only watch The Dark Crystal once every two years because I'm, I get too emotionally invested and, Ooh. shit happens you know right so like i for those things i think those are great movies but for beer if i can't drink two of you in a row i'll put them slightly lower on my list um, right but yeah if it's a if it's a tart sour it feels like you're biting an apple or something it's not it doesn't have that sort of sugar coat to right. the, that masks the sourness to it um mm-hmm. yeah love it they're great right they're great i mean right. the problem is when you get them you get like an eight ounce pour and it's nine dollars but yeah they they're they can be really great beers that's cool. So, Mike, what is your what is your go to? Um, I I like I like probably the porters are probably my favorite. Um, something that's a little thicker. Uh, but the the problem is, um, uh, you know, if you, I, I can't drink more than two of those, you know, yeah. it, it gets real thick. But uh, if I'm if I if I'm trying to go for distance, you know, uh. I, I like something like a Corona or a um, Dos or no, what is not Dos Equis. What is the? Um, They're the same thing. I don't. Know. Yeah, I know, like <laughs> hot day or what? What is that called? Well, the is good. Oh, There's El Presidente yeah. is good too. Yeah. Or so, an Imperial, right. or a mm-hmm. Soul, or a Pacific Soul. Right. Soul was my joint, man. When I was when I was like 22, 23, there was this one bar that had Soul. And it was one of the only places in Baltimore that you could really get Soul. And we used to drink that mother like crazy. Now, you're further down yeah. in the Mexican yeah. beer territory, so it's probably more prevalent in your area. Uh, but, but Soul was like a treat. And this one place carried it, and I would drink it. That's all I drank when I would go there. Um, but, but I, you know, I'm not – for the most part, I drink IPAs, and I've gotten to the point. I've, I, there's this new type of IPA. I, well, I don't know if it's new. It's new to this area. Uh, it's called a Sessions IPA, um, and they're they're like 4.5 percent alcohol. So yeah. there, it's an IPA, but it's a very like uh, easygoing IPA. So you can drink them. You know, you can drink like four yeah. or five of them in an evening without having to wake up the next morning with your head pounding. You know, because yeah. if you drink a really powerful IPA and you you drink like four or five of those. That's going to put a hurting on you. It's true. So earlier today, I was at a couple of different places locally here in Austin, Texas. Um, and now we have Bells. I'm a Michigander. You might not be able to tell from my – I did say the word tournament earlier, mm-hmm. which, usually <laughs> throws, which usually throws a clue to some folks right. that I have a weird accent. But, yeah, I'm from Michigan. So the Bells um, is just a, obviously a great brewery from just outside Kalamazoo. Um, and we have Bell's Two Hearted down here, which is, I would say a heavy IPA, but I think it's just so great. It, it doesn't fall into a lot of the traps that heavy IPAs do, right? And the right. whole, you're, I, mean, I think you're totally right. IPAs have been trending now for way too long. And Austin is very much, I don't want to get in trouble here. I don't think any of my, my, my beer reps or bartenders might be watching right now. Um, but Austin's a follower still in the, in the beer world. Right. So there's still sort of that IPA, that IPA trend that's been around for a long time. Um, and I think, I think other brewers are moving away from that, but, uh, IPAs are still really big down here. Um, and that Bell's out of Michigan is just Bell's too hard at ale is, I mean, it's been ranked the best beer in the world, like five times. Like it's super fantastic. Um, so I've had a few of those today and then I just cracked, um, a little voodoo ranger, a little new bell that. we That's good stuff. Yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. So this is actually left over from our last our last game night. We played some Fanaji a couple Mondays ago. This is left right. over. This is tax deductible off of Anthropos Games right here. Right. Okay. Um, Fantastic. Well, for us too. So yeah, it is. Yes. Okay. So, all of us. All right, cool. One one third of this internet connection right now. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. And only, you're right. Only only fifty percent of this drink. I I buy. I'm a very conscientious taxpayer. Only fifty percent of this beer and one third of the internet, I can right. I can count. 
All right, there you go. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, cool. Let's so let's talk some let's talk some science. Let's get into some anthropology because uh, you do happen to have a PhD in it, and I love anthropology. I took um, I was uh, I had the option to take uh, some science classes when I was going for my degree, and one of them that I took was an anthropology course. I took anthropology one hundred and one, so the basics. Um, yeah. And some of the things that I learned that I think our, our fan base might like to know because I was I was surprised. I was surprised. Um, one of the things that the, that the that our teacher, because he, he was he was a uh, he did archaeology work, and he was he was talking about how like people find artifacts, you know, they'll find um, uh, arrowheads or or uh, mm -hmm. chips like you know from from uh, stone napping, flint napping, yep. flint napping, yeah, and um, and he said that you know if you bring in if you bring in uh, an archaeologist or an anthropologist a box of artifacts, they're gonna freak out on you because the artifacts. Are only half as important, or maybe even less, <laughs> than where they the came and how they were. Where. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if yeah. you talk, talk, talk to that just a tiny bit. Like that's yeah. important, right? Oh yeah, hugely, hugely. So, so, um, so my other degrees. I'm, I was an academic just from not I me. Mean, it's, it's not just being a nerd or being intelligent. Like I mean, I, you don't have to be intelligent. Um, it's just a, a, it's an idea of curiousness, right? Ooh. And wanting to stand on the shoulders of giants, right? Right. So academia is about finding giants and crawling up them because i don't want to like i don't want to just come up with my own ideas i want to learn what everyone else has said and i want to follow that conversation right like let's be up to date let's be current right right first off so then anthropology as a field has four major fields so you've got social anthropology linguistic anthropology um okay. you've got your physical anthropology like right. the tv show bones and whatnot right. and then you've got your archaeology your oh that's Jones. what i'm talking about okay All yeah right. So archaeology is one particular sort of field. So when I came to the University of Texas, um, they have a history of being a four-field school. They're probably okay. really not anymore, and they probably haven't been for a, an entire generation. But they have that reputation. They're a very theoretically motivated school now. Great, great program. My advisors were all great. Um, but yeah, so archaeology, I, didn't, I wanted to go to archaeological digs. My advisor told me not to. She kind of set out things I should have that I should do to be more marketable and stuff in the future, which I haven't used. So maybe I shouldn't listen to her, but she was giving good <laughs> advice at the time. <laughs> right. But, but yeah, but archeology, span it's like, obviously everything is about context, right? And mm -hmm. archeology span in some ways and my friends, and they will see this. I've got some great gamers that I love. Um, we used to, it. it's been many, many years. I will use this. I will send them this, uh, this interview here or this, this show together to send them to get them back in the fold, but great, great gals. They were all, they were all gals in the field um, in archeology. span We would have um, fancy dinner nights twice a month. And one, one time we'd be out, one time we'd be in and they played the games. They played early dark. They had a mixed sort of time with it, but great, great folks. They're really interested in this, right? So these archeologists and they will, they will, if I say something wrong, they'll, they'll critique me on this because I'm not an archeologist by trade. But you're totally right. It's more about context and like all the things that happen in Indiana Jones. Like I just watched Raiders of the Lost Ark and uh, Temple of Doom at my house um, with my girlfriend. And she just took me for my birthday to go see on 70 millimeter um, The Last Crusade. Oh, okay. My, cool. Yeah. My dad took me to see it on my eighth or ninth birthday when it came out. And so my girlfriend just took me to this. In Austin, we've got so many great film things, right? We've got the Alamo Draft House, great film. Just to see it, and the, all I could think of the whole time, I was like, "No archaeologist would do that." Right? No, <laughs> do that. Yeah, yeah. No, you can't. Like, there's a sarcophagus. You would spend six years measuring it before you opened it. Like, right. you would never, you would never even <laughs> right. open it. Right. Um, well, so yeah, everything you said is totally true. Yeah. The, if they saw stuff in a box, they would freak out. Like, what was the arrangement? Where was it at? Was there a cluster? Was there not a cluster? Right. Meaningful? Because <laughs> and I guess it goes because archaeology is speculative, and that doesn't mean I'm not denigrating archaeology. But it's speculative in that it makes wizened and it makes informed inferences about how people might arrange different things. And so all of that information is so important. Yeah, you can't – yeah, if they saw it in a box, you're right. They would, they would freak out. I'm thinking of um, Emily, Nadia, I understand. Uh, you are correct when you watch this later. Yes, that would freak that would freak all of us out. It's true. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> all right. So, hey, uh, Mike, I just want to say one thing. I'm sorry, and then I'll let you go. I'm sorry. Something I've been meaning to say. 
if you guys are hearing dangling and freaking barking and shit, it's because my wife had to go uh, help her mother with something. So I've got the dogs down here in the office with me. I had them calm and asleep, and my daughter came down and got them all riled up, and they've been playing and stuff. I yanked their collars off them so it stopped jingling. So if you all are hearing any of that, that's me, and it's coming from them, and I'm hoping they'll shut up and calm down soon. Oh. Anyway, go ahead, Mike. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I thought you had the farts. <laughs> <laughs> right. I know, right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, all right. So, and it's interesting because you mentioned the the four branches of anthropology, and for me, the linguistic anthropology is what interests me. Uh, the uh, etymology of um, yeah. the words and sort of uh, the kind of how people migrated and languages mixed. Um, mm -hmm. I find that extremely um, fascinating as well. But what? Uh, let me ask you what area did you was your concentration oh well that's an artifact in itself sorry i'm replugging in my my laptop has been being has been it's already down to 40 percent wow in the last 30 minutes so i'm plugging it in um so actually the, we're, again, we're draining so sorry <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thanks the last 13 x's i've had that's great no <laughs> tell my dad that while you're at it you'll get along great right um yeah, uh, so, so actually the University of Texas um, has a fifth field, what I like to call the opposable thumb, <laughs> right. uh, but it's, uh, it's the folklore program. And so in most cases, um, folklore was a, a very worthwhile um, academic discipline that arose at a, at a certain time. Um, and it was really important because it filled in a lot of the gaps that other disciplines weren't really uh, attending to or tending to. Um, and in most cases, then that folklore department sort of gets defunded and it would be then swallowed up by the English department, which is what happened. For example, then, um, I guess only halfway at Ohio state where I, where I was at for a grad degree before UT. Um, but the thing, the interesting thing about university of Texas is their anthropology program sort of swallowed that folklore program. And so instead of looking at folklore as literature which isn't bad i mean like there's a very important things but instead of looking at it with a literary criticism sort of mind um the the university here and the professors here and you know the the, the trajectory of their thought was looking at folklore from an anthropological background That's right awesome. as yeah as like what these stories mean how they actually are effective in communities what they do Right. right. Like why does this person tell this other person this story? And so it became this fifth field, which used to be called folklore. And now at UT, um, they call it expressive culture, mm. but it's that's, and that's what I taught um, when I was there for grad school. They, I mean, I was privileged enough to be able to, to teach those introductory courses. So it was anthro 305 um, to, to the students there. And yeah, so that whole folklore thing was that fifth field. So yeah, so so that's how, how how I got in to the program. So they had I didn't actually apply to any of those four. I applied to that little fifth program, and it just got pulled into the anthro, um, the anthropology program here. Oh, that oh, cool. kind of does play into your whole the whole uh, alternate reality gaming and and yeah. sort of zeitgeist and memes and I guess that's sort of yeah. where you kind of fell. Totally, in. yeah, yeah. Okay. And I mean, before that, I was studying um, philosophy and comparative religion, and I. And I would decide that, that that field was a little too open-ended. Like there was no accountability. You as a scholar could just say whatever you wanted. And that's good. I mean, there are people are very people can be very informed in what they say. Their opinion matters more than other people's opinion. I'm sorry. I'm not an elitist, but some people's opinions, well, maybe I am. I don't know if that's what the definition is. Some people's opinions are more informed than others, and so they're more impactful and you can learn from them, I think in other ways, well, but I didn't want that. Right. I wanted to be a scientist. And since I wanted to have accountability, I wanted to say, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. I want to go into a place and I want to tell you how I gleaned what I have gleaned and where you could then go and do the same. I wanted that accountability of social science. So I jumped right. into anthropology and this program here is just awesome. I mean, university of Texas, they have a very, very robust and compelling and, theoretically forward thinking anthropology program. Hmm. Cool. You know, I think you would, have you ever read the book made to stick? Have you ever, have you ever read that? Mm -mm. Okay. It's, it's by, not. it's by the Heath brothers. So I guess it's two brothers. I don't know if that's, I would, anyway, I would assume the same. Yes. Uh, Maybe so, three. but it's, 
But it's called it's called Made to Stick, and it's um it's about what they call sticky ideas. So ideas okay, that stick yeah. around, and they 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 mention that uh, they mention that in several cases with folklore. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, uh, what is it when uh, prov- not proverbs? What's, what's well, proverbs is one of them. Um, but but any of these stories and religions are like this too, because you yeah. know how religions they they modify over the years or as oh, time Lord. goes on, and certain ideas stick around and they actually self they either die out or self strengthen because the ideas mm-hmm. that are strong and sticky stay. And they shed off all the stuff that doesn't work, which is why later on you'll look back at some older religion and you'll say, wow, that was some really crazy stuff they believed. Yeah, yeah, that's why that's not around anymore because yeah. only the good stuff stuck around. Well, no, and then, not like, the good stuff. Yeah. The huh? useful stuff. The useful stuff. The, useful, the, right. Stuff that was useful at the time. Yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. And um, – or, or, or just – uh, enjoyable, you know, or just just enjoyable by the people, the stuff that they wanted, that that they liked about it, you know, um, or, or that just it just has longevity. It's like, it's like the evolution of of ideas are, are sticky ideas. The the most sticky, they they survive through evolution or, or get evolved into, and the ideas that are not sticky get evolved away. They just disappear. Reconnection. All right, here we go. All right, reconnection. There we go. All right, we're back. Welcome back, Sorry. everybody. Right. Sorry, everybody. Remember that dog I was telling you about that's in here? Yeah, it chewed through my network cable while we oh, were talking. God. So Peter. I lost. Pete, come on. The dog ate my network the, cable. The, it really? did. The dog. Really? For... Hey, wait a minute. Oh. Hold up, Mike. Here. Don't Here's you dare homework. shame that dog. Don't you dare shame that dog. Here. Here's my homework. <laughs> there's, there's my network cable. <laughs> You cut that when we were looking. Yeah. Jeezy whiz, Pete. So, anyway. <laughs> any, it, Do you there's just no... keep a broken cable in your pocket for excuse yeah. <laughs> Just Just for such an occasion. Uh, all right, yeah. so I don't know how this is going to work out, but we're going to finish the show anyway. All right, sure. so... So, all right, let, let's let's get into the RPG real quick, because cause, uh, we, we got to wrap we're gonna <laughs> this up before long. All right, yeah. so I, I, was looking at, I was looking at Early Dark, and... Um, I, I think it's really really cool. I was I was looking at uh, uh, the the concept behind it, um, and and it's based on like what you wanted to do with anthropology. You want to pull anthropology yeah. into a role playing game. Yeah. So how how did you do that? How did you what did you think to add, and what did you leave out um, to, to make this game to to make it flow that way? Yeah. So um, yeah, I mean. I mean I mean, I had just started the program here and I, you know, we wanted to make a game that sort of just broke across a lot of the, I mean, it was very dry and those overdone sort of fantasy tropes. So we sold the game as like a low fantasy game, like a Robert E. Howard sort of low fantasy game, like not quite sword and sorcery, but you know, we really sold the game. Um, I think it was the third, someone could correct me. I don't know how to look it up, but I believe at the time it was the third game ever on Kickstarter back in 2010 like they didn't wow. have they didn't have yeah they didn't have different kinds of things there there was no tracking there was no game movie it was just you were on kickstarter it took like four weeks of like interviews before they let you on the, the platform um way 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 back when um so i think we were like the, yeah the third game around there but uh so we we sort of pitched it that way but really it was i think very different i think some people loved it some people maybe were confused by it um but we wanted to include it was, there were conceits really. I mean, they were, and again, I don't think I'm an elitist, but they were, they were conceits of like how cultures can work. So two of the different sort of civilizations are in the game. They, they're, they just naturally, they have three different genders. And we had people, in, even in the comments and Kickstarter and people years later, you know, commenting on Reddit threads and stuff being like, well, sci-fi has three genders. Fantasy doesn't, like that's just bullshit like how dare you put different genders in fantasy and we were just kind of like well uh human cultures can define sex and gender in very different ways and so we wanted to show that in the game right so we have like literally two of the five cultures just have three genders they're just different genders in there um and so that we you know we fit things like that into the game we have instead of classes which are sort of like archetypes we have milieus so really, like, you get your stats from being born in certain environments. Like, oh, is your family known for being, like, dock workers in this particular town? Here's where you get your stat bonuses. And or really the way you should look at this is not that you get these bonuses from being here. 
that you should look at it as though your character sort of shines because they have the characteristics that are valued in these environments. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah, so it's we, it's, we kind of it's more uh, bottom up than top down. What is it? Uh, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. You're exactly right. Mm -hmm. So we, we threw that in there, and people loved. Some people loved it. Some people hated it. Um, and we put that in there. And I would say one of the things we did not do, and this has been, I've never heard this criticism, but just myself as as a designer, I could understand this criticism of the game trying to be sort of uh, representational and like represent, I mean, other cultures or something. And then I, as um, you know, a straight white male Michigander, might not be able to speak to those things. I would. I would understand and I would completely acknowledge and, and nod to any such criticisms for early dark, but really we weren't trying to represent like sort of represent or voice sort of other cultures. We really just wanted to break all that sort of Tolkien influence and mm -hmm. just say, here's like 15 other places in the world. You can find awesome mythology. Here's like right. 15 other places where you can find different definitions of masculinity, different definitions of war, different definitions of valor, different definitions of success, different definitions of wealth. And so we tried to pull in as much as we could. Um, I think at the time that was actually really great and maybe really progressive at the time. I probably wouldn't make that game today the same way um, because now it's, I think we're, it's, it's eight years later. You know, now we, we, can, we can do sort of more um, heavy stepping and we could do more for that. Um, but yeah, so the anthropology is really, yeah, some of those conceits, right? I mean, about gender, about where, where, your, where your personality comes from. Right? Your like, you can tell what music you like by when your dad was born and how much money he made, right? Wow, that tells okay. You, like, that tells you what music you like in the United mm. States of America to a certain, I mean, obviously not for all cultures at all in all different locations, right? But as a way of just sort of gripping um, some of that mass audience, right? Which I guess we, we could be talking to, um, like, the white male audience, right? But the idea of it's very predictable. It's not about what you love. It's not, what about, it's not about what's in your heart. Like, you've learned that, right? It's you've grown up... Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's an aggregate yeah. of the way you were you were raised, and so we try to put that in the game, right? These little conceits, the very existential conceits. Um, so really, like, try and give a quick because we're running out of time, but I want you to try and give like a, a quick explanation of how um, a person is able to in your game um, collect a dice pool and build and and make successes and keep going because it's not it's not yeah. stats based. It is sort of a Again, uh, Pete's going to call you out, though, because that's a different game. You're talking Fontagy uh, now, not really dark. Yeah, but that's okay. You keep that's screwing okay. it up, Mike. <laughs> well, because I want to talk <laughs> Fontagy because I like that game. Well, yeah, that's but true. you can't change streams in the middle of the stream you never with no segue. We don't cross streams, guys. We're not crossing streams, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the first, it's the first time we've had Calvin on. You know, we don't do that until the third time. <laughs> right, yeah, okay, sorry, sorry. That, oh, I'm going to put a chalkboard up here, and I'm going to keep track of all the times I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> it's so number I'm two, gonna... Mike! No. <laughs> <laughs> no, so early, early dark were theoretical conceits, I think, in the game. And we really wanted to do that. I mean, just, you know, as people like, let's break that Tolkien thing. Let's break, you know, at that point, there was no 5e at the time. Um, shoot, there was barely, it was just the same time as Dungeons and Dragons 4e when they were really Ugh. trying to like, they were copying the internet, which was fine. I mean, they, they, I mean, Wizards of the Coast bought Dungeons and Dragons to bury it and they decided it would be smarter to bring it back. And so they, I mean, it's, I mean, it's totally fine. Um, but yeah, so that was a time. So then Fonagy, so Early Dark had all of our conceits was in sort of the, the game world and the material in the game. Um, then for Fonagy was more, I developed the mechanic of it for my dissertation research where it was all about emergent meaning and that, that idea of um, you have qualitative phrases. And so you, your character have qualitative phrases. Um, at first it sounds something like fate or savage worlds, which in practice, it's very much not like that. Um, but you would have phrases like last man standing and like heavy metal. And you could like pun off of the word metal or something. Maybe I shouldn't say last man standing because that's that Tim Allen show that um, is a travesty to the, to the American way of life. Yeah, we weren't um, going there. We weren't going we, there. Yeah, we can do that, right? So, I mean, just, you know, having these traits or something like, you know, uh, um, a, a, gosh, a really great one uh, that I borrowed from a, a Paul Simon, you know, like slip sliding away, right? can be a trait for your character. So every time you do something that sort of riffs off of this idea of slip sliding away or dodging, even in the most, in the most thematic sense of like the Paul Simon song of you like dodging your responsibilities or your life getting away from you or any of that deep sort of character development type stuff. If your turn sort of acknowledges that you get more dice. 
It can um, be or semantic the most, or super like just or ethereal. super literal. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or like I slide to the side. Right. You, right. Get, you <laughs> get another time. Um, and so, and really, you know, people think, oh my gosh, that's so subjective. That's so wishy washy. That's so impossible. No. Like at your table, that plays just like every single joke. And even D and D five now has the idea of inspiration, right? Which I'm not a giant fan of. I think it does great stuff. I think it brings in that to the game. And I think the game itself needs that. Um, and I, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of what they've done with five E, but uh, the idea of sort of that sort of that nod to, to narrative play, uh, we say Fonagy doesn't reward role playing. Fonagy is role playing. Like you don't get a tip because you finally did something cool. Every single turn you take in the game has to riff off of your character's qualitative traits. And mm -hmm. you literally don't get dice unless you do. So because slip sliding away, if that's your, if, so let's say you have heavy metal and slip sliding away, which your, your character's gonna be busting heads. That'd be a difficult sort of yeah. twosome to have. Um, but let's say you could do it, right? You could have a guy, you could have like a RoboCop type or you could have someone who's like emotionally distant or emotionally dodges, even though they're very much there phys physically, like that's cool. Um, and you let them play both strengths or you could almost do like a Deadpool thing or even a Spider-Man who's like freakishly strong, but also hyper agile, right? So even Spider-Man right. might have that heavy metal and that slip sliding away. It could be a good, um, like the mind of the Punisher in the body of Spider-Man would be a great character for that, right? Oh, um, okay. But yeah, so you just, you just role play. Every time you role play this idea of slip sliding away, when you duck, when you dodge, if you sort of shirk off things, like you get more dice for it. And because you have to do this every single turn, you can't make it this sort of high bar of uh, like Oscar winning role playing. You have to make it sort of loose, right? But it plays just like any humor plays on your table where if some person makes a joke and it's like off color and everyone's like, we're not into that dude. Like, you don't, get, you don't get the die for that, right? But if you play it and people sort of giggle, you get the die for it. So at first, mm -hmm. it sort of comes across very sort of loosey-goosey, and I think this is what, uh, what Mike was getting at, right? So the way the game plays is the more of these phrases, your character has phrases, and the game master adds themes, they add phrases to the, the encounter. And so you've got five of these you're trying to play off of on every turn. And the more of them you can include, the more dice you roll. Cool. And it's so kind of like there's there's some fate elements like this, right? I mean, have you played? Fate? Yeah, I haven't really played fate. I say fate and Fonji are like Star Wars and Star Trek. Okay. Like you know, like not to be gendered, but your mom thinks they're the same thing. But if right. you've watched them, they're night and day. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And yeah, fate has. I think the difference is fate. You um, every trait is literal in game. Mm -hmm. So if you have a trait like you know, like loves to bust heads or an aspect and fate's an aspect called like, you know, loves to bust heads. You could write that likes to punch people, gets in fights a lot, extra aggressive. Like it doesn't matter the words. It means something literal and real about your character. And if you want to incorporate that into your narrative, you spend a fate point and you get extra dice for it. Right. So it's very much a mechanical you can choose to bring in. It's, a, it's an aspect that you can bring in the story when you want, and you pay a metagame currency to bring it into the game. Okay, right, right, right. The dice size. But um, with so Fantasy, it, it is the game. It is it the... It is the game. You have to bring yeah. it in. You can't right. opt out. Like, right. um, and the, because it's words, because it's poetic, you can riff off it in different ways. And so the, the, actually the aspects in Fate are much more like the conditions in Fantasy. The conditions in Fantasy are... Uh, literal real things like I am between the wall and the fire or I am outside everybody else is inside you can actually write on cards literal real things about the story and so I think I mean fate's a great system it obviously does very very well in a bunch of cinematic situations I love it I follow all those guys on Twitter and I just eavesdrop and you know like have my little like heart eyes watching them talk about game design they're all really um, Donahue's, he, they're, they're great, great people. Um, but they're very different games, right? I mean, that's, right, that's yeah. a way of, that's cool. uh, fate's a story game in that it uses metagame currency right. to, so that you can then, you as a group sort of role play these characters, but you're at a distance because you're metagaming, which is obviously, again, fine. 
uh, but you're doing it from a little bit of a distance, right? And Final G, again, it's still traditional. It's a, it's a trad role-playing game in that you and your character, the player and the character have the same agenda. Um, that's cool. Maybe. That is really that's neat. That's neat. Okay. We'll have to have you. I was talking to, to Spence on, on in the chat room. We we'll have to have you on Game School. We we have a it's another show TSR does called Game School where we teach people we demo the game. We actually teach them how to play the game, oh, and then we cool. do like a fifteen yeah. minute yeah. demo. You you have to come on. But Mike, yeah, keep us on cool. track. <laughs> yes. So agendize us. Agendize us, Mike. <laughs> this is what I wanted. I I want you to know that I have done. Okay. In the chat room, I have pinned the link to the Kickstarter video. Ooh. About uh, more in depth about kind of how the uh, Fonagy system works, and uh, I yeah. really do encourage people to go over and do that because cool. uh, if you watch it, you can really get a better idea about how uh, people. That's yeah, probably true. Yeah, it's from 2014. Yeah. I bet I look like a goob, but it, nah. I'm sure it does communicate something. Nah. Now nah, you haven't changed a bit. You haven't changed nah. a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and now it's back with like, but, but even Kickstarter, I mean, Kickstarter is a, a funny thing, right? When we did Kickstarter like in early dark, you didn't say when it was going to be done. You're just right. like, hey, man, like, I promise you as an artist, as a creator, I will get you this product if, you know, we need this money to do it. And people are like, awesome. And we, you know, blah. and then with, with, when we did, we did a final, it was only an anime game that didn't, that didn't make it. It failed. Like, because um, people communicated, we don't want an anime game. We want a universal game or, you know, change it, change it. Yeah. And we're like, cool, but it, it was so different. And then the next time when we relaunched it the next year, the, everything had changed again. And now people are like, yeah. you know, the whole thing about t-shirts, if you put a free t-shirt in a Kickstarter campaign, you're doomed to fail. Because, yeah, yeah cause real backers, like super backers, people that are in Kickstarter all the time. I spend $500 a month on Kickstarter now. I mm. don't know how or why. I mean, I do know why, cause I love supporting art, I guess, but I'm on there all the time. And you, there's just trends, right? It's like trends in hip hop, trends in rock, trends in movies. Like in Kickstarter, if you put a t-shirt, People are just like, bro, that's rookie shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Right? And people so pick don't up pander. on it. Don't pander. Yeah. I hear but you. Not, I mean, it's just it's these subtle things. But every time I go to run a campaign, I'm always like two years behind because like it was the last time I ran a campaign. And they change their interface. They change their user interface as a, as a campaign manager, I mean, every five months. Dude, you know, every hey, four months. T-shirts on a Kickstarter right now is like is like a white girl ordering pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> you like basic. You like the idea right. of basic too. I do. It's All fun. right. I don't know. Okay. It's, it's my, my it's my meme of the week. With the coffee. Okay. okay. <laughs> I will mix it too. I will order it and I'll say right. Calvin and they'll spell my name with a K E. K E. Right. And yeah. They'll say Calvin and I'll say I will take that latte. Right. Sure. But yeah, it's very tre- it's very it's a trend of how you run it and a lot of these backers now. I mean, like. I mean, again, not to get political, but I mean, I will, but you know, like the alt-right or like some crazy stuff on the internet here, like the backers feel very entitled and they want certain things. And then they say, Hey man, you should change that video. And if you don't do it, if you don't listen to some of those backers, like they can tank your whole campaign on Kickstarter. Like there are, there are people, they run, like they're in the camp, they're in the comments all the time. Like give us an update, give us an update. And you give an update and they're like, wasn't fast enough. Wasn't what I wanted. Do this, do that. And people sort of follow and it's an anthropological, I mean, it's, it's a dream, right? You see these micro cultures that develop in the comment threads of these different games and stuff. And I mean, I found, you know, like a lot of miniature board games, the board gamers are so serious. And like, and you can see like leaders, you know, these people that will come in and say, you know, fuck these guys. How, they don't even know, they don't even have a manufacturer set up yet. Or how dare they try to sell us t-shirts when all we want is more game time. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah. And they will, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting animal. Like hey, it's Calvin, a really real interesting thing. Yeah. Calvin. Oh, yeah. Shit. Did you say game? <laughs> cause, I, I, cause I, I, I have a game. All right, Mike, like to play let's, a game. Let, let's do that, but let's do oh, this oh, first. Do let's do this first. Go to, uh, before this, uh, as this interview ends and we move on to the game, go to Anthropos, A N T H R O P O S games.com to find all of Calvin's cool stuff. And uh, you can find him on drivethroughrpg.com as well. Yeah. I'm not going to give that one out because it's a big, long, 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 long name, but it's but in yeah, the show notes right now. Type in Anthropos games. All of our games are Electrum bestsellers, they're all 4.9 rated or higher. Um, yes, we, I highly yeah, recommend we, we, them. Yeah, we we love our two games. I wish I could support them more. I'm a I'm a I'm a feeble old man, but we're pushing hard. 
to get out more stuff um, for our players. Awesome. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. All right, Mike, I'll tell you right, what do, I'm going to do. Do the thing. Do the thing. Here you go, Mike. All right, everybody. Welcome to Game Time with the Mythwits. I'll be your game master. And this week, we'll be playing... Moon. Plinko, 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 Plinko. Moons over Ikea. Ooh. Over Ikea, you say? Why, what moons over Ikea? Could it be the moons of Saturn? Yes. Okay. It could be. Or so, six or nine. Wait, Jupiter has nine, Saturn has what, six? Oh, oh it's, it's more like, seven, like a hundred. Seven, Twenty-seven, thirty-eight. Yeah. Dang. They're not Just done naming them all. They keep finding them faster than they can name them. Dang. But, <laughs> ironically, I can't prep for this. Would you no. know that the moons of Saturn sound very, very much like Shoot. a lot of IKEA lines? That would make oh, no. sense. Of furniture. Okay. Whoa. Oh, whoa. Yes. We're getting it. We're getting it. Linguistic anthropology right here, right? Yeah, all right. right because, see, because seeing the moons of Saturn requires modern technology, and so they were named much later. Yes. Right? So all the cool names were taken, all the romantic names were taken. Renaissance observers, Renaissance astronomers could not see these celestial bodies, so they couldn't name them things that were, like, exciting, like Titan, right? They had to name them things like Moon 17 or, like, Mark Knopflerosaurus. Right, <laughs> which is cool because Mark it's named after Mark Knopfler. That's right. It's a real That's dinosaur, right. dude. That is, I do, I do know that. Okay, all right. So Knopfler listen to this. Soros. Okay, you <laughs> must, you must, you must tell me if the following names are of an IKEA product or the name of one of Saturn's moons. You will okay. get one point for each correct answer, and there is no stealing. However, do you can you? Can you use it in a sentence or spell it for me? Uh, if you would like to, I could okay. always do that. But I would encourage you to make every attempt to correctly identify the origin of the moon's name or okay. the specific use of the supposed item from Ooh, Ikea. Right. Oh, yeah. That makes it more fun. There will be okay. approximately six each. Let's get started since we're running a little late. Okay. okay. Sorry, uh, folks. It was the dog's fault. Cat, it was yeah. the dog's fault. Yeah, Wait. the dog ate my... It was the okay. dog. Look, the dog ate my cord. <laughs> The court. Anyway, all right, go ahead. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Calvin, Calvin, you are our guest. Therefore, you get to go second. You get to see Pete crash and burn first. There oh, you we're go. playing against each other. Yes, of course yeah, you are. I would have done so much better if we were talking about the moons of Uranus. But yes, uh, go ahead, Mike. Point. Yes, <laughs> you, you are very familiar with the moons of Myanus. Anywho. Yes, that's stage three. That's, yes. that's <laughs> this is, three. Sorry, Wait, sorry. Pete and I have crossed more streams than we care to. <laughs> right, anyway, okay, yeah. um, Pete. Yes. Arkelstrop. Arkelstrop. You're messing with me. Ar Ar Arkelstrop. 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 Actually, I apologize. Arkelstorp. Storp. I Arkel Storp. Oh, my I apologies. changed my mind. I was going to yeah, go with Moon, yeah. but Arkelstorp. Uh, that is yeah. that is Arkel that is actually it, it's a type of end table that. Um, that, that goes next to it, and you can fold it out, right? You can fold the top out, right? And and there's a, a, an insert for a lamp that goes in there, and it comes with this tool, right? But uh, the last time I bought one of those, I lost the tool, and I couldn't put the fucking thing together. I had to take it back. It's uh, IKEA furniture, Mike. Dude, man, it's an Allen wrench, bro. Get yourself an <laughs> Allen wrench. Well, um, gee, gee, that that uh, that actually sounds like maybe you might have might have <laughs> might have happened to you. <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm just making that up. Are you, are I have you all serious? The, no, I have all the tools I need. I got to put everything together. Whatever. What? Uh, <laughs> uh, Arkel, Arkel Storp is uh, a living room table series from IKEA. Get the fuck out of here. I'm I so swear to God, dude. I thought you were <laughs> nice. like, pulling the story. Like, no, oh, just I know make, that one. I thought you make, guys were the game against Holy me. Shit, no, dude. no. I was just making that shit up out of whole cloth. Total guess. I had wow. no clue. <laughs> no clue whatsoever. God, Pete, I got to give you 1.2 points. Two points? Man, one point 1.2. 1.2. A 1.2. A 1.2. Point two oh, point conversion. You might nice. get a touchdown and a free kick. I don't, I don't get that. Well, 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 basically, if you, uh, if you make me laugh or you are uh, okay. strangely correct, you will get extra <laughs> points. Okay. okay. That's, that's, uh, right. Everyone knows that's sort of the thing how this happens here. Okay, so. <laughs> 1.2. Oh, 1.2 <laughs> points. Right. Um, 
All right. Uh, I got to get really close to the screen because, man, pronouncing some of this crap. All right. Um, your, uh, Calvin, yours is Albor, Alboric, Alborix. Alborix. Yes. No, 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 no. I, I, I apologize because I, I, I have the, uh, the phonetics of these as well. So it's A, A, B, or X. That's what it is. A, B, or X. Um, well, I'm going to, I don't want to, I don't want to cheat, but I understand the linguistic roots of every Ikea. Hey, use meaning. what you got, man. Hey, use what you got, buddy. Use what you got. So I'm going to say that that's a moon, um, because Scandinavian languages don't use X's like that. Nice! Um, so I'm going to say that it is, and you, you're telling me there's hundreds of, of Saturnian, of Saturnine? Well, there are uh, at Sat least Saturninian moons. There's over 50. So I'm going to say that Abbe, Albiorex. I don't know Latin, so I don't. But I guess that could be Greek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'm going to say it's like the 42nd largest moon. And it is, it's known for, it's really depressed job markets. <laughs> and uh, this guy is like, there's like a green haze of gas and everyone acts like they're high, but they're just really depressed. <laughs> that's what I'm, that's what I'm, that's what I'm shooting. For. Uh, you, okay. I, I'm going to, I'm giving you a correct answer. It is okay. in fact a moon. Okay. Uh, I will even give you 1.1 1. 1 because ah! I, I do like, I do like how uh, the, the green gas ish gas over the you know from the moon okay hey, you know what i forgot to do mike moon. you know what i forgot what? to do i forgot to do this yes. sound well eh, I you'll do it. it later yeah well, sometimes we all have that problem pete we can't get get our sound up anyway Why? um <laughs> i live that way every day and and uh just so you know um <laughs> there it is alberix um is that does have an X as an English as the English translated spelling, but it is in um, it, it had a B R I K S bricks was bricks. You know, the, the Greekish kind of uh, so it is Greek, um, yeah. Like yeah. So okay, what does it mean? Ooh. Do we have an etymology of that? Uh, I'm gonna have to. Yeah. I didn't dig that deep. I'll look this. it up later because I'm I I took Koine Greek, yeah. so I can translate New Testament. So oh, I'm, I'm, right. into, I'm into the Greek. Oh wow! Right. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm going to lose so bad. All right, Mike, go ahead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he wanted to talk about linguistic anthropology. I mean, this is the game for it. Oh, shit. All right, All right go ahead, Mike. Okay, Peter. Mm -hmm. Yours is Searnak. Searnak. Searnak, 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 Searnak. Uh, you know, I'm going to say that, that Searnak is, is a moon, and it was, uh, it was struck recently by a, uh, another smaller moon um and and it used to be called seer and it was hit by knack and now it's seer knack they've come together uh in, in an unholy union of moon on moon love making uh, uh i concur well you i will say that you are correct sir that it is a moon nice. in fact <laughs> uh, however <laughs> however there was no moon on moon um, um well, you know conjugation I, I don't, that must I don't have been the other one yeah, he yeah. told me he didn't do research. I don't know if he knows that. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Calvin, here is yours. Uh, Toftan. Toft Toft oh, shoot. Toftan. Can you use it in a sentence? Sure. Oh, shit. I dropped something on Toftan. <laughs> I'm going to say it's an Ikea furniture mm -hmm. it, it, uh, item. A toftan. I'm going to say it's in the same aisle as the Afghan, but it's not. I'm going to say <laughs> uh, it's actually a kind of indoor-outdoor pillow that makes all of your guests wish it was sort of the opposite. So, like, when you put it outside, <laughs> they're like, hmm, this is a really soft pillow. Like, that's, that's, this is really nice. And you think... Damn it! I should have put this inside. But then you bring it inside for Christmas, and then your guests are like, "Wow, this is like a really sort of plastic-feeling odd yeah. pillow." And you're like, "Damn it! I should have left it outside." 
So yeah, I think it's an indoor outdoor pillow item. All right. It goes with the tough tan set of of furniture at okay. IKEA. All right. Um well, the good news is uh, it is, in fact, an IKEA item. Nice. It has nice. nothing to do with a pillow. It is actually yeah. a tough tan trash can. Oh. Oh, well then. I oh. know. Yeah. Okay. So okay. dropping something into your tough tan is dropping it, you know, into your okay. trash can. Yeah. yeah. I do that every day, like multiple times. I, I drop yes. things in my tough tan all the time. All right, Peter, are you ready for your yes. next one? I am ready. All right. Uh... <laughs> I don't care how I mispronounce this. It will not give you a clue either way. Here you go. Okay. Fornyort. No, oh. Fornyot. 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 He could be that faking is... you out. He could be could faking be. you out. Could be. Now, I, 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 I'd like to spell this for you. Sure, good. Okay. Now, the only thing I will not, sh I will not reveal are any umlauted letters. That's what okay. I will not, Fair enough. I will not Fair enough. reveal. However, this is F-O-R-N-J-O-T. Fornyot. Okay, Fornyot. Approximation pronunciation. Yeah, that has got to be a piece of IKEA furniture, but I'm going to say that it's, it's a um, Fornyot. What would that be? That has got to be – it's a dish holder. So, like, you know, you, it's, it's a wooden Ooh. rack thing that you put dishes mm. in, um, and, and it's usually oh, like for the, drying the off your dishes. Yeah, like yeah, the, yeah, like the bamboo one. one. Yeah, it's like this, yeah. and it's for drying your dishes off. I think that's what it is. Yeah. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, just out of curiosity, yes or no, Calvin, do you agree with him or not? Um, well, yeah, I was going to say there's a steel. Um, I there's don't no know steel. What, but... I don't know what Fornyat could be also. But, okay. if, but to, keep it, to keep it clear, though, I'm going to say it's also an Ikea. But I'm going to put this more in the um, – uh, I'll keep it in the kitchen just to keep it safe. <laughs> keep it in the but kitchen. I'm going to put it on the other side of the sink. I'm going to say this is more for, like, separating your cleaned silverware when you're done. Uh, or, like, oh, something yeah, to so keep, so like, all your whisks and your spatulas in or something. Okay. Oh, right. okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so, like, to put your utensils in. Yeah. I'll give a small augment to all what right. he's saying as a double-dairy right. back sort of – Right. Right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, if you were saying that Fornyat is anything having to do with the kitchen, you would be wrong. Is it a moon? Fornyat Forn is a moon. Really? Oh, I got that one wrong. Yeah. Uh, huh? Wait. So, but it is an IKEA moon. It's not an <laughs> IKEA moon. It's a moon of IKEA. <laughs> it's a. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know uh, if you could put any utensils there or not. Uh, I don't know how big it is or if it has any kind of gravity to it. Um, I don't know. It would be a long way to go to get your utensils when you, yeah, uh, I know. When you need it's them. Certainly they, not close to your sink. It's exit 256 on I-35 here in Austin. It's a drive. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Calvin. Here's your next one. Ordning. 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 O-R-D-N. I N G Ord Ordning. Well, you got me on that one, and that's a that's a that's a great English transliteration of either linguistic tradition there. Yes, um, I know, isn't it? I'm gonna say it's a moon. I'm gonna say it's a moon because we've got Ord. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna work on that. Okay. Um, but we've ah, shoot. This, but yeah, but this, 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 this not, not final answer. Okay. Uh, <laughs> we do have several more, so we can, uh, you know, we can. Pick okay, it up fine. I'll, fine. I'll jump on it and I'll say it's a moon, and I'm gonna say it's like the ninth, the ninth moon that gave them actually like a, a good anchor for them positioning the other moons mm. around Saturn. Well, okay. all right, that's that's interesting. So ordning, is actually. A stainless steel kitchen utensils, oh, okay. so you can put your uh, utensils in oh! there. Oh, yeah, just, just buy your fort yacht. So, you just uh, triple ass me. Oh my god, <laughs> nice triple ass. I like it. No. That is good. That, I realized I was in the crucible there. I realized it. I had no hints. I had nowhere to go. Yeah, you know, That's you good. were like you were like in the future on that last answer. Well, I think Ord is actually Latin, not Greek, right? So you should have been like, I mean, I should have been like, shit. They probably could have realized that earlier. Yeah. 
Oh, that's right. good. Here you it's go. Like, I'm a sophomore, right? When you have a little knowledge, it actually makes you worse. Worse, you know? yeah. Done. Yep. Little it's like this knowledge. is a great lesson to all you listeners out there. A little bit of knowledge is shitty and terrible. <laughs> it's okay. horrible. Never, yes. never rely on it because then you rely on these bullshit premises that you should never have learned and they're wrong, right? <laughs> you so you're basically yourself. which you're Always basically describing most of the internet and most of the comment section of most every post in the world. <laughs> no, most of the internet is absolutely hyper bullshit nothing. <laughs> Right. The little yeah, right. the, the little Fat kids that, like literally want to like, you know, like murder people and like dox great feminist scholars and stuff. Yeah. Those are yep. the sophomore assholes. No, the vast yep. majority of internet are just useless. You know, like just people having opinions, which is cool, but like they don't hurt anybody. But you're right, <laughs> sophomores hurt people. I just could have hurt someone there. That was me. I learned my lesson. Now right. I will not rely on those. All groups. right. In the interest of time, this is what okay. we're gonna do. We are doing. Two speed rounds. Okay. okay. Oh. You have no time other than to just tell me what it is. All right. Okay. We're gonna go, we're gonna okay. go and tell. And then there's after those two okay. rounds, then we'll have two more that we can have a little fun with. Um, okay. And then see where we are in the scores after these two. Okay. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Pete. Pete, we we'll go with you first. Yep. Ivrig. 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 IKEA. Ivrig is IKEA, and Ikea. that is correct. Ivory yeah, or IKEA wine glasses. Good. Ooh, shit! I have those. And I wouldn't have known though. And okay. Calvin, right? Tarkek, Tarkek. God damn it! Damn it! Give me the hard ones. Um. <laughs> okay. Tarkek. <laughs> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna. Uh, I'm fine. Moon. Moon. Sure. Moon. Whatever. Tarkek is a moon. Nice. Very wow. Good. wow. All right. Peter. Anthe. Moon. Ant Anthe. You say moon. Anthe is a moon, and if oh, you yep. said Anthe was the moon, you would be correct. Good one. Good one. Good nice. one. Wait, use your Greek. All right. Now, my friend Calvin. Ooh, my apologies. However, <laughs> sur, surter, surter. Oh, oh, I think that's an easy one, actually. I think that's an easy one. Surter. Spell that, Mike. You need to spell that for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. S U R T U R. Surter. You know what you, you know what it is. It's such a mood. It's a moon. That's a moon of the planet Saturn in our solar system. If you said Surater is a moon, you would be correct. Yes, of course it is. Well, man, Surter. I'm like dying with these bullets every minute. Mike, <laughs> Surter is one of the Titans, I think. Was he a Titan? No, he's one of the uh, Asgardian. Um, oh, Asgardian. Is Surter, he's the guy who destroys Asgard, the, the flaming sword from Thor. There we go, ahead, Mike. Okay, all right. All right, now, Peter. This is yours. Okay. Your last one. Uh, actually, oh my God. Yeah, I get one guys. more. We're counting. You got. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is, uh, you get one more as well. However, the, the, the score right now is 4.2 to 4.1. You oh. guys are neck and neck. So this, this next. We're necking. We're yeah, necking. necking right now. Oh. We're necking. So I, uh -oh. I suggest that you make, uh, you know, this uh, something uh, worthwhile to, you know, edge. Edge uh, a tenth I'm a of fan of edging more. Okay. I know. Okay. Here we go, Peter. <laughs> <laughs> I just got that, Calvin. I just wow. got that. All right, go ahead, Mike. <laughs> I mean, I I got it a while back, but here we go. Right. Sedlig. 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 Sedlig and the Angry Inch. No, Sedlig. <laughs> Sedlig. 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 I'm gonna say it's IKEA, and I'm gonna say that. Um, it was actually named. Uh, it, they were the 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 the, um, the people were fans of American comedy, and they liked Cedric the Entertainer, and they went with Sedlig because it sounded like Cedric. Uh -huh. So that's and, and, and what does this entertaining 
uh, large oh. entertainment. Oh, oh, it's a, of, it's a TV uh, stand, of course, because they they were that's what they would watch their movies and their TV specials uh, on is uh, uh, a big entertainment yeah. stand. It's got several. It's got a couple of drawers, but it's got this glass thing that slides in between, and it never really covers anything. Like you slide it this way, and it covers this half, but this shit's open. And when you slide it this way, this shit's open. So you're always having to dust no matter what you do because if the glass is over here, you have to dust these shelves off, and if the glass is over, here, that's yeah, that it's a pain. Terrible. Whoever made yeah, that is an asshole. It's like pants that are. Too short, like shorts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, like shorts. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, if you said that Sedlig is a uh, IKEA item, let's just say if you said it was an IKEA item, you would be correct. Now, you would be correct. Yeah. However, you couldn't be further from putting <laughs> anything. Is it, wait, can I? Is it a lamp or a light source of some kind? No, it is not. God damn. It is, it is an item that you would put your flatware. Uh, actually, no, it is flatware. You and flatware. It is flatware. You're, it's you're, flatware. You're haunting me with flatware. <laughs> <laughs> All right. God damn. So, Mike, is that like 0.9 points or something? Gosh. No. Okay, no, one point. You're kill me. No, you get, you get your point. A full point. Okay. okay. Five point wow. two to 4.1. Right. Now, okay. I mean. Come on, Calvin. Yeah. Kill it. Yeah. One one tenth of an inch. We're going by inches, right? We're going right. imperial. Imperial. Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, I uh, <sighs> here we go. <laughs> Sniglar. Sniglar. Man, can you can you use it? In a, wait, can you spell it for me? Yeah, there you go. Can I spell it? Yes, spell it. In the great. S N I G L A R. That's too straightforward for it. Yeah. I'm going to say it's IKEA as well. Okay. Um, and you've been taunting me with flatware. I think that's a tease. Well, I, uh, okay. I'm going to go more house and garden. Mm. Ooh, I'm going to okay. say IKEA house and garden. Outdoor. So it's outdoor. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm thinking. Yeah. Outdoor what? I mean, either that thing you wrap the hose around with, like the crank, or like, <laughs> one, or like one of the one of the clawed ah, trowels you get in your like your little basket you get for your mom for Easter. Oh, okay. All Maybe right. like a crock, but like Northern European style, like a Scandinavian <laughs> crock you can wear. I don't know if they sell those at IKEA. But something outdoorsy. So not outdoor. not like not like Dutch shoes, but Scandinavian shoes. Yeah, well, sure. Yeah, I mean, well, there's a, there's you could talk about the relationship between Scandinavia and the Netherlands. I mean, we could get into that, but yeah. We could, but we so, won't. So, right. So, not that. No, yes. No clogs. No, no clogs. So, right. but, but uh, something having to do with the outdoors. That's what I've got. I mean, okay. I, mean I admit I'm, right. reach, I'm reaching for ghosts you are, here. You are reaching. However, yeah. Sniglar is not a, pl not a moon. It's not oh, a moon. wait. Okay. <laughs> gotcha. It's not a moon. Wow. Wow. It, it, it is, in fact, an Ikea item. However, okay. oh, I was really hoping I could give you something there because it, it is a series of infant bedding. Oh, oh God. Which, <laughs> I was not, infant bedding. Like, I, I mean, it's... I mean, Sniglar. Come on, I Sniglar. Know, look at my <laughs> wish list right there, man. Right, right, right. Uh, well... So, I mean, I mean the, all right, so... I, I, honestly, the fact that Pete nailed the first one—I mean, he yeah, owned he it. Yeah. I mean, I—you have to admit—he, he, he, he. I agree. I agree. <laughs> I concede. I mean, that freaked. Call me, call me Al Gore. <laughs> right, call me. I can. <laughs> All right. So, Mike, because we're running some time, let's get this over with. Let's do it. Congratulations, I win one. Peter. We we actually prefer the ho we actually prefer the guests to win. We actually don't like winning. Well, I'm but so sorry. I suck. <laughs> no, wait, no. We, it doesn't get any closer to this. If Mike wasn't doing the the one point the point ones and point yeah. twos, you actually would have won because we, ties go to the winner. Yeah, that's ties true. ties well, go I, I, ties go I mean, to the guests. Yeah, I mean, I can, well, I mean, I can do math as well. I mean, I appreciate I, can, I appreciate the condolences, man. But I'm okay either way. I appreciate. <laughs> okay, your I know. I know. Oh God! All right. So as you're doing, I'm gonna try and pull up what is what this um this uh, Arkle, uh, Arkle Storp is because I swear to God you you nailed it so good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get out the list real quick. All right, so everybody, make sure you um, 
Ah, oh, man, I did the thing. Hold on. Oh, you fucker. Da, 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 and he did it. Oh, well, he dog. called the dog twice. There we go. <laughs> no, not that. I turned off the He's wrong back. thing. He's back. There we go. There we go. It's back. All right. So, uh, anyway, go to anthroposgames.com, A N T H R O P O S games.com to check out all of Calvin's really cool stuff. Uh, it, it's really, really awesome. The 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 dice mechanic is fantastic. Uh, the the whole ingrained system of of having to uh, uh, of use those uh, aspects to, to describe what you're doing and, and it's just I mean and you can't opt out. You got to be creative and, and do it. I love that. Uh, Early dark is really cool too. I I I love how you went the uh, a more scientific approach to cultures and 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 how things would naturally and we didn't get into it I wasn't able to get into it because we had that interruption but yeah. but but when I was doing my RPG that's one of the things I did I was um, I was bothered by the fact you would have all these different races living on this world together and it just didn't make any sense the way it was just jammed together in like most fantasy games like that's not yeah. how things work yeah. uh, so yeah. so that was one of the things where I was just kind of like uh, um, you know, wanted to change, and, and I like the way I like I like the approach you took. That was very awesome. Awesome. Guys. So, Thank Mike, you so did, much. yeah, absolutely. Mike, did you get the thing? Yeah. You find your Agalor. There it is. Oh, nice. <laughs> very cool. I mean, with the wooden table from the fold out and the, no, the fold out. You wow. Like with the drawer, okay? You right. with the drawer. <laughs> right. that is and the folding table. You said it folded, and I was like, "Oh my god!" I would <laughs> buy you one of those if I knew your dogs weren't going to eat it. Yeah, right. I know, right? Oh, don't lady. buy me anything right now. This puppy's eating everything. He's a oh. little sh little schmecklehead, but he's cute. He's cute, but he's just he's eating everything. He's at that puppy stage where they uh, eat everything. I'm always pulling shit out of his mouth. All right. That's what I've heard. I've heard. All right. Let's do it, Mike. Here we go. Uh, you've just enjoyed another awesome episode of The Mythwits. Even it's kind of two episodes the way it's split in half in the middle. Uh, we're live all over, so it's good. <laughs> we're live on Facebook. Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guests questions or just banter with the other Mythfits. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. God, I don't know what editing I'm going to have to do on this one. Find us on Facebook and Twitter as Mythwits and check out Mythwits.com. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcatcher. Do like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media and help spread Mythwits love over the entire planet. And, I, you know, anyone who's listening to this on podcast right now, our listenership is really up, man. We're, we're getting a lot of listeners and i want to thank you you yes. right there in your no, car you're, you're or welcome. in the gym or whatever the hell you're doing when you're listening to this and these words are going in your ears thank you thank you from the bottom of my heart Mythwits is part of the tsr podcast network check out tsrpn.com for more cool shows Mythwits is a creative commons product like a shirt in all the places just don't edit it don't sell it and don't bury it in the backyard for aliens to find or else they'll think humans were idiots make sure to check out aetherforge.com for more cool stuff and join our mailing list thanks everybody for listening tell your friends to tune in and until next week mike hey your foreign york is in my ankle storp <laughs> all right everybody thanks there we